gonna share how I built these LED batons. To build those yourself, you're going to need a roll of LEDs. These are normally sold in five meter rolls and you're going to need one meter per baton. Aluminium channel strips and frosted covers. You could use a plastic strip, but these metal ones will act as a heat sink for our LEDs, keeping them brighter for longer. Enough wire to connect it all up where you plan to install it. 12 to 24 volt, 10 amp automotive wire is plenty. Optionally, some cable ties for strength. These are going to be used to make sure people can't pull the wire out of the strip. They're dead cheap, so why not? A soldering iron and accompanying gear to connect it all up. Or, if you don't fancy soldering, some of these LED clips that connect tightly around the LED strip. I wouldn't be scared of soldering though in this project, as there are only two wires we need to connect for each baton, and it'll help us keep the cost right down. And finally, a power adapter to power them. I'm building this from my garage, which doesn't have any mains power, so I'm gonna be using this big battery pack with a direct 12 volt out. If you want to run them from the mains power in your home, you're going to need a transformer like this, though most likely a much bigger one, as this could only power one baton. No matter what you buy, make sure you get the correct voltage. Normally 12 or 24 volts, these are 12. LED strips normally always advertise their voltage and watt requirement per meter. So make sure your transformer can supply enough watts for the number of meters of LEDs you're going to be running. For example, these are 10 watts per meter. I'm going to be running five meters. So I need to make sure my power supply can provide at least 50 watts, so there's no harm in having more. Links for all these products can be found in the description. Well, that's enough prep work, let's get building. I've brought waterproof LEDs due to the damp in my garage and they come wrapped in this plastic shell. To keep them waterproof after you've cut them, you'll either need to buy some end caps or just fill them with some hot glue. Keep in mind, you should only get these if you need them as it costs more and it will affect the cooling. While we're up close and personal with the strip, we can see the indicated safe cut line every three LEDs as well as the bare contacts to snap or solder onto. To make your life easier, it's worth buying LED strips with an adhesive backing pre-installed. If yours don't have this, just use some double-sided tape. Start by pulling away some of the tape backing and push the strip tight up to one edge. Now, work your way along, revealing more tape as you go, but don't reveal more than you need as it will just get stuck everywhere. The waterproof case can be tight, but it does give you some wiggle room to move the strip inside it. As I went along, I kept running my finger up and down the strip to ensure it's all flat and flush to the edges. When you get closer to the end, start to think about where the tidiest cut line will be. Once you're happy, it's time to cut the strip along a cut line. Here I cut the strip line really close to the stuck down edge as I don't plan to run a wire out of it. If you do, then you may want to cut it more even. Now let's prep our wire. Strip back the outer plastic and then reveal both inner wires. This is really easy with a wire stripper, though you could use a sharp knife, but please don't use your teeth. Give it a good twist to stop it fraying. If you're soldering, then tin the bare wires. To make this easier, I've got them supported on a pair of pliers. Then tin the LED strip the same way. It may look like it's burnt, but that's just the flux coming off the solder. To prevent the contacts touching the bare metal, I'm wrapping the wire in some heat shrink with a slot cut in the side so I can slide it over the strip. As we've pre-tinned everything, we can just press the wire and contact together with our soldering iron. Make sure you solder the red to the plus rail and the black to the ground rail. This should be indicated on your strip. Then slide the heat shrink over the strip and use a heat gun or a hairdryer like me to set it in place. If you're using an LED strip to wire connector though, you won't need to do any of this. To later support this wire joint, I had a cable tie here, which will bear against the end cap and another cable tie later. You can tighten these by hand, but this tool is great as it gets them really tight and cuts the end off for you. Now let's give it a test with these solderless temporary wire connectors into a battery pack. A wiser man might have tested it before setting the heat shrink in place. but luckily for me, it's working. Let's also look how you would connect up a mains power transformer. I've started by opening up the output side, which will go to our baton. It should indicate the positive and ground output. Make sure to insert the red to positive and black to ground. Tighten it up, sorry about the focus. I give it a slight tug to ensure it's tight then reinstall the cover to clamp it all down. 
This is similar to how the cable tie on the baton will help support that joint. Then rinse and repeat for the input side. Here I'm using a pre-cut and twisted UK mains power cable. The brown is live and the blue is neutral. Check for the indicated live and neutral input, slot it in, and clamp it down. As you can see, it's not necessary to tin these wires if you don't want to. Give it a little tug test, and then plug it in to test it's all working. Now that we're happy with that, let's sort out the harshness of the light. This is where the diffuser strip comes in. Mine just slides into a groove, but did take a bit of effort to get started. This one's just gliding along, though I did have some others which needed a bit of persuasion. Now with this in, it looks 10 times better. Let's finish it up by sliding in the end cap. I had to make the wire hole a little larger due to the heat shrink. If you don't have any pre-drilled holes, you'll have to make some. Wrap around the other cable tie, making sure it's tightly pressed up to the end cap. This gives us a much stronger joint than just the solder or a clip. And then you've just got to rinse and repeat those instructions for all of your batons, and that brings us back to this. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. If this video has helped you out, give us a like. If you want to see how I install these in my garage and view the end result, give this video a watch. Am I going to get sued by the mouse?